Souls are just me, trust me Something in the bed just above me Something like a dream state You call it a clean break Do you feel the vibes, baby? Do you feel the vibes? Hey, Explanation, now rocking with your boy KOR X Kalel, the last son of Planet Xbox, and you're listening to Super Pod Shots. I want to thank all my supporters out there and fans for continuing to support Tech Podcast. Um, today, we have more great and intriguing content to talk about. First, I want to start out talking about GameStop, man. You know, big news coming out of GameStop. I'm almost, I'm almost surprised as much as I am appalled. <laughs> by the news that GameStop is publishing Insomniac's new game. Now, I had a big, big uh, debate um, with uh, you know Twitter friend of ours named Raymond, uh, big KI guy, and we talked about Insomniac's gaming. He was for the publishing of it because, and I understand where he's coming from. GameStop has to adapt. It's a changing time. People are buying digital. You know, their trading sales are probably going down because people aren't purchasing games physically like they used to. Um, literally, they just had an announcement that digital digitally um, that digital revenue had made 61 point. I believe it was 61.2 billion last year. That is insane. I mean, most of that obviously comes from PC, but PlayStation and Xbox also played a role in that. And that is great to know that digital is on its way up. Physical is still viable. But at the same time, we all know how GameStop's practice of trading in and the reselling of games actually hurts developers because people aren't going out to buy new games. And as someone who speaks to developers, as someone who supports the purchase of new titles, it's disappointing that, you know, a lot of companies have shut down because either their games didn't sell well or people have just been waiting for them to pick them up secondhand. And that's people's choice. That's without question. I don't I don't sit up here and try to, you know, correct what GameStop is doing. It's a great business They that, you know, people are able to trade in. They have that option. They have a store to go to. Obviously, I still think the money that they give you is too little. Uh, you know, unless it's like the next day or you beat the game within a week or something like that. But, you know, for the amount that you pay for it and the amount that you give back to me, it's just really not that substantial to where you should really be able to go out and pick up something else um, and maybe go towards another developer. So, you know, developers don't get this this kickback money, which I think they should. I don't know if they started doing that, but I think they should get a kickback. It's still their game. It's a reselling of their game, and they lose money every time someone buys something used. Now, I got no qualms with people buying used products. I buy used products without question. Um, I just feel that, once again, as a used product, that they could at least give some type of residuals to the developer to keep them sustained and keep them in a profit so they can continue to make great and good software. GameStop has now decided that they are going to publish their own game with Insomniac. Now, this game is not a major AAA title. It is an indie game, but it does look pretty cool for any title coming out of Insomniac. But I question GameStop's motives. GameStop obviously is a retail company. You know, the, the guy I was talking to on Twitter stated that as a retailer, there were, there's always someone who are making their own products for their consumers. You have Walmart. Walmart has, you know, they have a, a cheap line of their own products. So they work out a deal with somebody to where they have a cheap line of products. You have clothing stores that sell their own brands of clothes and things like that. Um, you have stores in general that may sell their own clothes and, and things like that or help uh, uh, the branding with a smaller company and they get a major profit from that. So GameStop goes out and they're publishing this game. But to me, it's just weird. GameStop is infamous for these exclusive DLC deals and it's these it's exclusive uh, uh, reserve type of things. And you can only get this game physically at a GameStop. You can't get this game anywhere else, according to what I've read recently. So you can only buy the game digitally 
on the Wii U, the Xbox One, and the PlayStation 4, and then only physically if you don't have online at a GameStop. If you don't have a GameStop in your area and your online is trash, you're not going to be able to play this game if you're even into this type of game, which is called The Deep. Um, it seems like you are a young girl who gets in the submarine and you explore the deep parts of the ocean. And that's cool. I love little things like that mystery, you know, uh, kind of like that Metroidvania where you're traveling around and you're opening the map as you go. You discover new things, discover new enemies. It's pretty interesting. It's pretty cool. But I'm just uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable. I'm not a hater. I'm not a hater. I've never hated anything in my life. Well, I won't say that. But regardless, the point is, is that GameStop publishing something, it just feels wrong. I don't know why it does. It just does. Don't ask me why. It just does. It feels wrong. First of all, GameStop publishing a game sounds wrong. <laughs> Everything about it sounds wrong. It makes no sense to me why it's wrong. It just sounds wrong and I'm sticking to it. I just don't think they should do it. And I would hate to see them be like, okay, you can get the deep with Aquaman DLC. You know what I'm saying? For like $24.99 or whatever. Come reserve today. We give you a free keychain submarine. GameStop is going to milk this game to the bone. They're going to do as much as possible to make as much money on this game. And it's going to be sleazy and it's going to be creepy. And it's just funny to me that GameStop is publishing this game. But the, the thing that I'm, I'm concerned about is that if GameStop is doing this, what does it stop another retailer from doing this? I mean, we already heard about what Amazon is doing. Amazon, I think GameStop just beat Amazon to the punch. Honestly, Amazon picked up a Double Helix who used to work on Killer Instinct. They're making games. They're mobile games. Maybe they may come to consoles. Who knows? But at the end of the day, they're making games. So you're going to wind up seeing Amazon now as a publisher, GameStop as a publisher. Who's next? Walmart? Walmart got bank out the wazoo. You don't think they can do it? Dude, Walmart got so much money. They have these people over here in other countries working for 15 cents, living off the same water and, and, and breathing like air that's intoxicated. It's, it's horrendous. It is absolutely horrendous. If Walmart <laughs> enters the video game industry and they start making games, this is going to be a fiasco, bro. Like, it's just... It's crazy. I don't even understand what's happening right now. The industry is changing. People are going digital. I feel like a dinosaur at this point. <laughs> I feel like the times are changing too fast for me, man. The times are just changing too fast for me at this point. It's just funny. It really is. But hey, man, more power with the GameStop. They got to adapt to the changing times and situation of video games. And in order to adapt, like they did say they were looking into going mobile. They did say that. They did say they were looking at to go on mobile. So if that's their plan to go mobile, to start publishing indie games in their name um, and finding other ways to generate revenue, more power to them. Um, I, for one, I haven't shopped at GameStop since I bought my Xbox One. God honest truth. I've, I've been buying my headsets from Best Buy. I, I don't know how many headsets I bought. I mean, they have a great warranty policy, honestly. It's not even that expensive. I've, I've gone through, I don't know how many headsets already because Turtle Beach is just cheap with their plastic. And for some apparent reason, the Astro A40's mixed amps microphone is just horrendous. It's trash. So I went back. Now I got the Stealth 500s. But um, they got a great warranty. At, at every step, I've been able to return it without even using my warranty, just using the original warranty and swapping them out for a brand new pair of of headphones until I found the perfect ones, which right now was the stuff 500s. God forbid those break. You know, but at the end of the day, man, it's like, I, I don't know where the industry is heading with publishers. Anybody can be a publisher if you have the money. But when you start adding retailers to it, and video games are different. I think that was my main thing. It's not like it's clothes. It's not like it's like something you buy. It's video games. And when you're dealing with video games, you can always add on this extra content. We're living in a world where DLC is is the you know dlc can be anything from the ending to a game to bonus content to a few costumes it can be milked to death and people would buy it that's what people do people you know generate to things that seem cheap but they could afford it and it makes it feel makes them feel like they're enhancing their game they'll do it
And we always gripe, all of us, all the hardcore gamers, we all gripe about DLC and how it's hurting, you know, uh, uh, milking a game or how it's not worth it. And you look at some of the DLCs out there, it's kind of true. It's like not really worth it. It's kind of a waste of money. But in the end, you'll have a company make millions and millions of dollars off the DLC because you have a few people out there who go out and buy who feel that is worth the price, even though it may not be. So I do expect this game to do well. Obviously, it's an Asomniac game. It would do well. I will support the game and buy it digitally on my Xbox One like I've been buying all my games. Um, and hopefully, Insomniac's new game does well for them. And they, they, they continue to produce the games that they want to make. And I'm hoping that they come up with a new Sunset Overdrive as I've been enjoying Sunset Overdrive. Um, and we'll see, man. We'll see what the future holds for GameStop, GameStop and any other... Uh, retailer out there who wants to get into video games as a publisher. The Division beta is absolutely amazing. If you trust my opinion as your resident RPG head, you buy this game day one. This game is nothing like Destiny. I don't know why people keep saying this game is like Destiny. It is nothing like Destiny whatsoever. Like, it's not even the funny thing about it is that as I played the beta, I tried my best. I really did try my best to see what the comparison was to Destiny. There was none. Maybe the fact that they both might have MMO on the box or RPG on the box. That's about it. This game is a combination of Watch Dogs, Splinter Cell, and Ghost Recon. That's basically what this game is. It's all balled up into one and it works. It absolutely works. Everything about it works. You know, it's very watchdog-ish where you walk around and you find these little, uh, these little items all over the place and it's all techy. They pop up on the screen and you, you hold X and it like, you know, it takes a little second for it to, um, register. Um, and you get, these little tech items and you can see these echoes and things like that. You know, it's almost like in Watch Dogs when you would hack into a computer system and you could see something that's going on in someone's apartment through a camera or a phone or something like that. But in this instance, when you go up to an echo, it allows you to see the past. You know, it allows you, it gives you like this kind of cool imaging um, shadowing type effect where it shows you a frozen point in time but runs back all the audio of that sequence and it's really really cool and it's different you know not not something that is like oh my god groundbreaking you know something that's really really cool and you know I guess you could say like innovative but it is something different and it's pretty cool the world and atmosphere is, is kind of you know watchdogish as well I think where it separates himself from Watch Dog is that it's, it feels like a good game. It just feels it feels like a fresh game with fresh content. Um, where it where it's like Splinter Cell was like the gameplay is so Splinter Cellish. It really is. The gunplay is so Splinter Cell. Like the gunplay is is really fluid. Graphically, it looks really really clean. 1080p on the Xbox One, 30 frames per second. Some people talk about uh, frame drops and things like that. Honestly, I didn't really have any. Like, if I can really think on top of my head, I might have had one instance where it probably I could feel a dip. But besides that, it was rock solid. And that was when I think we were coming out of we were walking into the dark zone. Me and my buddy, we were walking into the, into the dark zone together. Um, and when I entered through the door, it dipped for half a second. Then everything was good. But besides that, I've never had any frame rate problems. And that's a beta. So I would imagine that the actual console retail version or the digital version, once it releases the full version, should have no issues whatsoever. Or if they do have issues, it will continue to be minimum at best. And um, the game is it looks great. I don't know why people say it doesn't look gorgeous. Obviously, it's not going to look like how it did originally when they first showed it off. But the game looks great and the gameplay is just awesome. And then when you when you look at Ghost Recon, I think of the weapons, you know, I think of the customization you can do with some of your guns. Customization is pretty cool, man. They have the whole, you know, I won't say it's a Destiny system, 
because you know it's just typical rpg stuff man it really is it's not a destiny system you have items that you could pick up that are color coordinated white is your basic generic first level color you know green is the next level then you have blue then you have orange which is probably like you know uh rare and then you have i believe somebody told me they have purple and i got this source from someone who actually worked on the game as a game tester for ubisoft so i think believe purple's in the game and purple is legendary and things like that so the game does have its um different items and hookup and weapons and you can customize a gun anywhere from the muzzle to the scope the clip the handle it's really cool you can change the skin on it it's great i really like the game they have a lot of guns in the game a lot of variety of guns and i'm i'm very impressed with that because very often you don't get many guns when you're playing different types of guns different types of games but um in this game it seems like you have a lot you know and i was really impressed with that so um, it's good to know that they have a large variety of weapons in the game from pistols to shotguns to um you know assault rifles and sniper rifles and things like that and that's really good i think people will, will really appreciate the effort that ubisoft did i'm gonna be honest with you this might be Ubisoft's best game they put out this generation. That's how I feel. Like, just, just from the beta alone. Some people might have found the beta boring, but I play in the clan. I play, you know, core, K-O-R. So if I'm playing with my group, which I played mostly with um, this week, um, all the last couple of days, and then I played a couple of times with a couple of good friends, uh, uh, indie dev, and a few other people that uh, just popped in. Because what's cool about it is when you go in the game, they put your friends in your world. Like you can look on your map and actually see people from your friends list just walking around in the world. And if you guys want to team up, you can automatically team up. It's so fluid. It's just, it's a really great idea what they did with this game. I'm, I'm like, I don't know if I've given a game this much praise in a very long time, but you know, if this is my take, if this could be a, 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 a super take, you know, on, on the division, I would give it automatically. I'd probably give it an 8.5 out of 10 from the beta. I haven't even played the game. Dude, when you get into when you get into the dark zone, it is nothing like what I played at E3. Let me tell you something. When I was at E3 and I played this game, this game, after playing this game, this game was so low on my list, it was an afterthought. It really was. After playing this beta, this game is one of my most anticipated games to come out this year. Like literally, and I and I, I was hooked on Ark. This game got me off Ark. That's serious. It's that serious. I'm not even playing. I didn't even play Ark for like the last three days. <laughs> it's been that serious, you know. So if I'm telling you to pick this game up and pre-order it or reserve it or do whatever you got to do to get your hands on this game, get the game. You can customize your hat, your clothes. You know, your your uh, boots, your jeans, you know, make yourself look different. You, people walk around in the environment and you can help them by giving them food or candy and they'll give you clothing items. And every item you get could be different to customize your character's look. You can have a scarf, you can have a hat, you know, glasses like it's really dope, man. I really like what they did with the game. Um, and then obviously. You can customize yourself. You can put on a vest. They have different tiers of vests. You have different types of gloves, different types of knee pads for protection and armor. Like there's a lot that they put into the game that I think people will be pretty cool with. Um, the perk system is pretty cool too. It reminds me a little bit of Borderlands in a sense, not so much as how diverse each um, particular ability is but more so that you could jump from class to class and mix and match and then finally probably get to the bottom of one particular class and that would be your super because you have a super in the game so right now the three classes that i know of that they put in the game is a medic a tech and security and basically if you're a medic you're exactly what it is but what's really cool is like the first ability in medic is the pulse which basically is like you know 
a radar shot out to the public and it hits everything. But if you mod that, they have different mods to a pulse. And one of the ones that I chose, which was really cool, was that you had the ability to mod the pulse and anything caught, any enemy caught within the pulse that had a highlight over their head took bonus damage. I thought that was sick. I'm like, wow, that is sick. They also have one where you can pulse out and it will stop other other pulses from hitting and make you kind of go invisible to other pulses. The game is really cool, man. You take that, you mix and match with security, which kind of gives you like, you know, um, automatic shielding and um, it, it allows you to have like, I think you have like um, a robot with you or, or like, you know, rolling defenses. It's like more defensive, kind of like tankish. And then the tech guy is more on like, um, I guess you could say weapons and electronics. Uh, one of the things you get as a tech is a sticky grenade. That thing shoots like a rocket out of your wrist. And um, people keep thinking it's a rocket launcher, but it's not. It's just a, it's a sticky grenade and you can shoot it on people. And it's cool how they like they scramble and they're trying to get the rocket off of them. And all of a sudden it blows up and it trying to blows up everybody in the vicinity if somebody tries to help get the rocket off too. So um, the game is really great. The atmosphere is great. New York, man, you know, being from the city, walking around, it was pretty, it was pretty close to authentic. I was in the garden and, um, because it's like your first mission is in the garden. If anybody is from New York and you look at it, it's not bad. It's pretty close. There's some things missing from there. Obviously, maybe they got it before they did the renovations with the garden. But um, it's pretty close. And it's really cool, man. You walk in there. They actually actually have pictures from all the people who were at the garden like they do actually in the garden. So it was badass, man. I was impressed with it. The streets was on point. The city just looked really great. And... Man, Manhattan, when you zoom out on that map, is so big. And just to think that I only walked around a part, a small part, just a small area of that map and felt like I traveled forever. Because there's no cars in the game. You just walk. So it just feels huge. If they open the whole map during the game, forget it. You will be, you will feel like everywhere you go is a new experience. So I'm really excited for the game, at least off the beta. It's convinced me, and I hope that um, if you haven't played it and you listen to this, I've convinced you that it's going to be a really good game. This is definitely going to be a home run for Ubisoft. All right, so I want to talk about Microsoft's marketing choices. Um, you know, Microsoft is just not the Microsoft that they used to be. We all know this. We all can see this. Um, this isn't nothing new, but I just want to look at some of the things that and some of the decisions that they made during the course of this generation and how I think that a lot of their gaming marketing choices have been really smart. To be honest with you, they've been pretty smart, though. I think they can do better internationally outside the United States and the UK. Um, well, first of all, they did. You know, third party deals with Capcom, Crytek, uh, and Insomniac. We had Dead Rising 3, you had Rise, Son of Rome, Sunset Overdrive. Um, and then, of course, I can't leave out my girl, Lara Croft, and they did the deal with um, Squaresoft and I mean, Square Enix, Squaresoft. I wish it was Squaresoft. Um, and they did the deal with Square Enix. And Chris's Dynamics for Tomb Raider. And I think all those games were, were great on the Xbox. They really were. They were great. I love Dead Rising 3. People hated it. But I thought Dead Rising 3 was a great game. And I, ne I never played Dead Rising. Ever. And Dead Rising 3 has me hyped for the next Dead Rising. And I hope they continue off of the story from Dead Rising 3. Because I really like the character they had with Dead Rising 3. Um, Rise, again, though repetitive, had a really cool surprising story and it was gorgeous and still to this day one of the best looking games on any platform like literally it looked amazing um sunset overdrive fun as hell really cool uh i mean it's probably one of the best games when it comes to pop culture they just really hit it out the park with the game. I look forward. I hope they come out with another one. And I'm glad that the game was a success on Xbox. Maybe not the success that 
you know, people may have been expecting, but it was a success. Nonetheless, it made it to where it needed to make it. And of course, Tomb Raider, which is in a success in itself, it broke what it was supposed to. Well, I'm not going to say it broke what it was supposed to break, but it did break a million units. It went platinum, and that's good. We're well above platinum. People are still playing it today. I know people are buying it. It's out on PC right now. I don't know what the PC sales are, but the game is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Everyone knows this. If you don't hate on the game because it was a time exclusive on Xbox, it's a great game. Go out, buy the freaking game, man. Support these devs, man. They going all out making these beautiful looking games for you. And, you know, you want to go buy the ones that's broken. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got people going out buying the games that's broken but won't buy the games that work because of, you know, some type of fanboy agenda. I just don't get it, man. I don't care, man. I don't care if a game came out on PlayStation first. If it come to Xbox and I like it, I'm going to buy it. That's real. And, you know, if you're not real enough to do that, then you're fooling yourself. You're missing out on a good game. It's a really good game. I recommend picking it up. If it's on PC, pick it up on PC. If you got an Xbox and a PlayStation, pick it up on Xbox because it's there. It's available to play. You know, I wouldn't want to wait a year for it. I know that much. So I would definitely pick it up on the box. But if you only have a PlayStation, then when it comes out, support the game, man. You know, this whole thing about boycotting a game because it came to PlayStation, they abandoned the fan base. Bro, this is like, this is like crazy to me. You understand this is a business? People make business decisions? Like, I, I think the, I think some people emotionally involve themselves too deep into certain things. Like, like the dev made it for that individual person this game is dedicated to you <laughs> you know what i'm saying and it's not it's a product coming from a company that runs a business trying to make money microsoft is like the you know one of the largest the top three largest companies in the entire world and they happen to help produce this game and I think that it turned out to be one of the best games this uh, last year and probably all of this year as well. So support the game, man. So, the, you know, they, they made those three deals. I thought the game was awesome. I think those games are really good. When you look at some of the marketing deals that they had. They, you know, obviously Call of Duty and Activision guys left them. I'm not going to sit up here and say Microsoft stepped away. Let's keep it a hundred. Activision left them because the larger install base with PlayStation... At the same time, I'm pretty sure Phil didn't re-sign the contract or didn't try to re-sign the contract, which in my opinion was the smartest thing this man could have done. It probably was one of the worst things that Don Magic could have done, even though it made the Xbox the face of Call of Duty for the console. And it still sold more on the Xbox One, by the way, um, this past holiday season, at least uh, from what I remember seeing at least in the united states excuse me i won't say worldwide but in the united states that in star wars um you know it made it made the xbox this do bro console and now when you look at the xbox it really the only thing that you see marketing as a shooter is halo that's how it always should have been it should have always been halo call of duty should not have never overshadowed halo um, especially when it came to like some of the marketing budgets and things like that and, it, and i don't think call of duty ever overshadowed it but as it got bigger and bigger as a multi-plat, you know, it, it was up there, man. It was up there with Halo. So I'm glad Halo was, is, is back on top, face of the face of the console for now, until probably Quantum Break comes out, because I'm hearing some amazing things about this game. And by the way, I reached out to Remedy, and I've been talking with them, and I think that we'll, we'll be able to get them on the show sometime in April. They're telling me they can't do it right now because they are actually about to go on a world tour sam lake's about to go on a world tour to promote the game um if i was in new york or la i could have did a live interview but i'm not i'm in florida so they said um sometime around the launch of the game they'll set something up to come on the show so i'm excited man i'm excited to get these guys on the show it could be sam lake it could be anybody man just being able to talk to these remedy guys about quantum break and alan wake and any future projects that they may be working on is going to be a lot of fun. Um, so as I said, you know, the marketing deals that they had were cool third party. Then you look at, no, excuse me, the exclusive deals that they had, the time exclusive deals they have that worked out, except for Sunset, which was, oh, and Titanfall. How could I forget Titanfall? 
Titanfall was huge. I can't believe I forgot Titanfall. Um, excuse me, Titanfall, for, uh, Titanfall friends <laughs> out there listening. Um, Titanfall definitely was a mega franchise for them at launch. You know, it moved. I think it moved a million units by itself. It really did. That was amazing. Like it, it did what it was supposed to do, man. It moved those units. So that was really impressive with Titanfall. I look forward to Titanfall too. They've been talking about it lately. Um, I reached out to Abby Happy too. She told me that they couldn't do anything until it was announced. So hopefully we'll get Abby on the show sometime this year to talk about Titanfall 2 and that would be awesome to have her on as well um marketing deals wise though you look at they had Witcher they had Fallout Madden FIFA um as well as a few others I can't think off the top of my head unfortunately um but yeah they had a few others as well marketing deal wise they they have solid deals I think you know, you know, if I have to compare them, I think Sony has come out with some some big ones, though. Um, you know, the Grand Theft Auto was big. The Star Wars was big. Destiny was big. Um, I thought Fallout would have been big for Microsoft, but it just didn't turn out that way. I think if they would have sold more of those custom consoles, you know, not the Pit Boy edition, but the ones that was like all bronzed out that looked like the Pit Boy, like like a, a console from Fallout, it probably would have did better, in my opinion. But I think Microsoft, man, they they've done a solid job this generation with their marketing deals and things like that, um, and that's great for them. That's really great for them. I hope they continue that success and stuff. But my issue was that I think when it comes to marketing to other countries. And getting their consoles completely in other countries, they're a step behind. They are a step behind. This is just not the same Microsoft. And I really believe that Microsoft themselves have put the Xbox division on some type of budget. They they just are. They're just not the Microsoft from the 360 era that would just throw money at a wall until it sticks. They're not. They're not doing it. I think under Sataya... They are a different company. They're more wise with their money. Then they're investing better, in my opinion. Um, that's without question. You can just look at the games that's coming. You know, they own their IPs, Recore, Scalebound, Sea of Thieves, um, and of course, Quantum Break. But at the same time, they own those games, even though they're made by third parties, except for Sea of Thieves, which is made by first party. They own those games, and that's great. That's good that they own those titles. That means we can always see, you know, another sequel to that particular title. Um, you can always bring in a team to just work on those particular particular games, kind of like you have for three four three and the coalition. I'm not a fan of that. I would prefer that the studios worked on those games along with other games. But if Microsoft wanted to go that route, then they can make a bunch of small teams to just constantly work on those games. So I think they are definitely on the up and doing things a little bit smarter when it comes to what they want to do with their portfolio and what they want to do marketing with third parties. I think they're down internationally. As you guys know, Tick Podcast created TICGN.com as a space for the Xbox gamer and the multi-console Xbox gamer. Um, That way you guys can have a place to get, you know, your news and information without worrying about any type of clickbait articles or any type of, um, you know, drama filled induced propaganda coming out by some of the bigger sites because they're trying to appeal to the larger install base. So we have a writer. His name is Jason McKendrick. So, you know, our guys, um, they do a great job at, at getting content and finding news um, solely for the Xbox, um, as well as entertainment and anything related to PC and Windows. And he happened to see something on NeoGAF which is a, a forum that I I normally don't recommend because it can be a cesspool of all types of nonsense. Um, but this particular thing actually wind up having some really good information on something that someone saw. Well, apparently on the Windows Store, there is uh, an app, or shall I say a game. And the game says that it is Young 
Conquer. That is the name of the game, Young Con Conquer. It is by Microsoft Corporation. The only issue that I have with it is that it is teen rated and also it is under the games. So Young Conquer. If you take a step back and you really think about what this could possibly mean and what we may possibly get in the future, it seems that Rare may secretly be working on a new Conquer game. And this can be a reboot to the Conquer franchise. The only thing is, is that it doesn't seem like it's going to be a mature game. This game is rated teen, meaning we probably won't get the dialogue that we all were hoping for with the original um, Conquer. But then again, this is young Conquer, not the older Conquer that's a little bit more rough around the edges. Um, it also is really cool because, you know, we've all been enamored with the thought of Sea of Thieves and how Rare is going to make this comeback with Sea of Thieves. Mm -hmm. And suddenly they are just hitting us with this behind the scenes. We don't even realize what's coming possibly at E3 or by the end of the year they may have a conquer game and this could be really, really big. And, I, and I'm saying to myself, man, if, if you get see if these in the summer and they drop this young conquer game in the fall, people will lose it. Like this could literally be, you know, the beginnings of conquer, how it all started, you know, how, <laughs> how the big great poo came to be and how conquer, you know, gets older and becomes this kind of ruffly, you know, jokey a hole of a character. There's so much that can be done with this with this thing. The only problem is is that it has a team rating. I don't understand why they would make it a team rating. You know, for a fact that people really want to see Conquer of old. I'm hoping that obviously they try to maybe adjust the rating. I would like to see a mature rating on it. But teen is fine, I guess. I mean, if you're just looking to play the game, if the dialogue is funny, if they bring back the original voices, maybe they can pull it off. You know, it doesn't have to be hardcore with F-bombs and things like that. But if the dialogue is good and it's a little raunchy, then, hey, man, that, it might work out. So I'm really excited um, about this. I think that Microsoft working on a new Conquer game is really awesome. It's completely unexpected. I didn't think it was going to happen. And seeing it up here really makes it seem like it's coming this year. This may be an announcement at E3 and may be one of the reasons why Phil isn't worried about, you know, these games going to PC because they're constantly producing games for the Xbox along with it. This is this is in the Windows store. So, you know, it's going to be a Win 10 Xbox game. Um, but the cool thing about it is at the same time, it's a new conquer on Xbox one. It may not be the conquer we're looking for, but we don't know what this conquer could be until we actually see it or hear it. So I'm excited, man. I'm glad that it's up here. I'm glad that I got a chance to see this, and I'm glad I can report it to you guys out there who are big fans of Rare and really would like to see Rare make a comeback. They are slowly, slowly, and gradually doing what they do best. Sea of Thieves and Conquer. They're on the right track. They already set it off with Rare Replay. They give us a nostalgia factor and make us remember the games they have. I said this on the last Super Pie shot that I did. They just trademarked Jet Force Gemini. Why? I mean, if you're renewing the trademark, okay, I get it. But it didn't seem like a renewal. It just seemed like they may be making a new Jet Force Gemini. You know? Could you imagine Jet Force Gemini, Conquer, and Sea of Thieves all coming out of Rare? Over the next year or the next two years, that would be bananas. People would lose it. They would be like, oh, my God, Rare is like killing the game right now. I mean, even though Rare isn't, you know, and I hate to say this because I, I get tired of hearing people say it. Even though people want to want the Rare of old, you know, people move on, man. It doesn't mean that the studio becomes bad. If you look at all the games they release after, you know, the major guys from or the majority of the guys from the original Rare left, and some of the guys, because remember, there's still some people there. There's still some guys still at Rare from the original team. Um, but at the same time, if you really take a look at it, these guys have produced games that have been great games. They haven't been classics. I think Cameo at the time was a classic. I don't care what nobody said. I thought Cameo was a classic. All those orcs and all those ogres on screen at the same time, 
on a 360 for a launch game was incredible during his during his release. During, nobody imagined something like that during his release. It was great. It really showed the power of the 360 back in the day. I really feel like Cameo was a classic. It really was. Um, but really, when you look at all the games they released, they re- actually had solid releases. Most of those games were either rated anywhere between 7, 8, and 9. And they all were solid. They didn't, you know, I, I think a lot of people just fall into the fact of they have such great history with Nintendo. And as guys who grew up on Nintendo, Super Nintendo, N64, the nostalgia factor plays a big role into why we judge them. At the same time, people move on. You have to bring in new talent. Yes, they did a lot of Connect things, but some of the Connect things wasn't all bad. The original Connect Sports was actually really good. I didn't play Connect Sports 2. Um, and Rivals, I didn't really enjoy it my, either, but I did like the technology in Rivals when it came to it recognizing your face and creating a caricature of yourself. So I thought that was really dope. And um, these guys, they, they have a really good studio. They got really great talent, and they do have one of the Males brothers there. So they still have talent at the studio and somebody who knows what they're doing from the original team. Conquer, I think if they really wanted to be something big, they need to get it to where people get what they want, get the feel of what they want. This Young Conquer thing just seems like something to appeal to the kids. I don't like the title of Young Conquer, but until the game come out, I really can't judge it. I'm just basing it on what I see. So, yes, there is a new Conquer game. It seems to be in the works. I'm really excited about that. Along with that, guess what else was up there? fragments fragments also had some type of area for it it says that it is a microsoft game it's rated mature which is what i think conquer should have been but that is great to know that means that it may be exactly or similar to what i was talking about when i first talked about and found out about the game fragments you know you're walking around you have abilities you have powers you're shattering people or shattering objects or shattering things in the fragments and um it's purple the screen is purple anyway what it, what it looks like and what i'm looking at it looks like someone had posted kind of like the initial background color and imaging of it but then what wound up happening was it, it wasn't ready like it wasn't supposed to be posted you know what I'm saying? Like they, they probably hit publish, but wasn't supposed to publish it. There's no picture or anything like that. It just says the name, you know, what type of, uh, what type of, um, you know, product that it is, which those two are games. And then it tells you the rating and then it shows you it's, it has share on it where you can share it out to people, but this is all in the window store. And, you know, it, it's just funny because those two games are two games that, you know, one people have been wanting and another is a new IP that I've talked about for a while now. So seeing these two games, I can only imagine that these games would probably be talked about at either um, E3 or Gamescom unless they just wow us at the Microsoft conference coming up on February 25th and say, hey, here's Fragments, here's Young Conquer. And I think to me that would be cool but to me, I think that would be bigger if you did it at E3. You really need the wow fact at E3. And um, those two games would be cool. A new IP, people would be interested in talking about it, kind of like we did when we saw Record, Scalebound, and, and um, Quantum Break when we first saw it. And I think Fragments could be one of those type titles. And Young Conquer would just get people talking in general because it's a Conquer title. Um, they also went on and has something in the app section of the Windows Store called Hollow Studio. And um, that just seems to be, I guess, some type of studio app to work on HoloLens, either games or products or something like that. So it's really intriguing to see what Microsoft is doing in this space. You know, these three things showing up in a store, two games and an app, you can tell that they are really setting up, I think, for this conference, honestly. The way I'm looking at it, it looks like they're setting up for this conference. They're going to be introducing some stuff um, for the Windows 10 Xbox side of things. And that's going to be really cool. And, and I like this better because I think that if they could separate the Windows 10 and Xbox stuff to this conference and leave E3 completely 
for Xbox One, I would be absolutely happy with that. Absolutely happy with that. And if they did that every year, I would be absolutely ecstatic with that. That means you would get two conferences from Microsoft, one for Windows 10 and Xbox games and apps, and another completely just for the Xbox One, you know, which basically would show you any of the things um, that we didn't see gameplay of, as well as a few new games here and there, and then GDC, not GDC, excuse me, and then Gamescom will show you the future. Because I like what they did last year. I like how they showed us stuff that we saw and added in a few new things um, to keep us into what they're producing IP-wise, and then to turn around and then go to GDC and then show newer IPs that we don't even know, unannounced stuff. They keep us really intrigued. I think they should do that from now on. If they did it that way, people would just be really looking forward to all Microsoft conferences because I definitely look forward to E3 and then E3 Part 2 at Gamescom. So hopefully they do that, man. I'm really excited that Fragments is becoming a real thing and seeing Young Conquer out there knowing that they have Conquer, a game being made is really exciting as well um, because I like platformers. I really do. And Microsoft is very scarce on them they don't have many of them so i think if they brought back a, a, a conquer platformer add that to their library they they got some special they're starting to hit all points i think the only thing they need left is to kick out some rpgs and to kick out some horror games and they may have most genres locked up they already had rise with the hack and slash if they pull out rise too man people will lose it you know for that game to even you know for that game to be rated what it was people to rip it how they did and yet every xbox fan to this day says they liked the game key word was it was repetitive but nobody ever said they hated the game everyone i've talked to everyone i've seen always said rise was a good game it just was super repetitive and it was kind of generic because it wasn't any variety in weapons so if you can fix those two things in the next game I think Rise 2 could be even better, but that's up to Crytek, man. You know, and they were like crying about some things. I think maybe Phil Spencer reached out to try to get the IP. They didn't want to give it up. The fans were saying, come on, give us the game. You know, Crytek is Crytek, man. They had the word cry in their name for Christ's sake. So it is what it is. But anyway, man, that's our show for this week. I really appreciate everybody stopping in and listening to Super Pod Shots episode 37. I have come a long way with this show, and I'm glad that it has continued thank you guys for all the support we will have another tick podcast episode coming up this week i got some guests coming on i'm working hard to you know get you guys the content that you want to listen to and i i'm working right now and in in talks with a special guest that's going to come on the show a special guest panelist that will stop by sometime this year hopefully sooner rather than later and i'm going to keep it a surprise until i get the confirmation once i get the confirmation and i'll I'll let you guys know i don't know how you're going to take it i'm just going to keep it 100 i don't know how you guys are going to take it some people may be like why are you doing this why is this person coming to show i hate this guy you know and other people may be like hey that's really cool you're really stepping up and you know you're making big moves i don't know how you guys are gonna take it but hopefully i get the confirmations and things like that we can set up some dates and i can make some announcements and promote it um it will be a fun show i think but <laughs> fans are gonna just go crazy in the comment section i know you guys are so hey man i'll be back next week as usual i'm your boy k-o-r-x Kellel, the last son of planet xbox and i'm off this planet peace